Hello, Michael here with another how do I render tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to apply fingerprints um, and sort of dirty textures to the surface of a uh, mesh in RenderMan. So I'll start off by showing you what I've got here in the way of maps. So I've got this uh, texture here which has got a bit of roughness and scratches and some fingerprints. And I've also got this very fingerprinty map as well. Um, I'm going to be using both of those in this tutorial and I will leave a link in the description uh, on where to get those. So the first thing we'll do is we'll select our object and I'm just going to give him a new shader. And um, I'm also, just for the sake of this tutorial, going to create a plane and put it next to the robot. Um, and this is just so you can have a look at what I'm doing on the robot on a flat surface as well as the curved surfaces. And I'll assign the same um, material to that. Okay, so let's have a look at the Hypershade Editor. So we will call this Fingerprinty Surface, just for the fun. And um, we will grab a Pixar Texture node by hitting tab and typing in PXR Texture. And then we're gonna open up the textures that I showed you previously. So I've got the Fingerprints one here, and then I've got the other finger, Fingerprints one here. I've already converted those to .text. If you have not, just open the regular file and RenderMan will take care of the rest for you. All right, so what we're gonna do is just run the result um, R um, to the specular roughness. Uh, the reason I'm just doing the R channel or the red channel um, is because this actually doesn't have an alpha so it's just I'm just needing to move one channel across and the red channel is just basically the same as all the others so we'll just use the red because it's only in black and white um, and we're going to want to increase we're going to want to increase the face color uh, on the specular so this is the specularity amount essentially and if we run an IPR Okay, so to see that, we're just going to increase that face color. Uh, and for now, we'll just make the uh, diffuse color black. And what we'll see is some of those fingerprints from that map just starting to become obvious throughout the robot surface. So that's pretty easy to see. And fingerprints, as you can see on the big square that I created, are always very easy to see on highly reflective surfaces like aluminium that have a lighter um, or that have sorry a um, darker um, diffuse color so as I say increased that to be whiter obviously it's going to be more difficult to see because the diffuse essentially uh, so because the roughness tends to be whiter in value um, as it takes on the the color of the light <coughs> So if you were to make this look plastic, for example, um, we'll grab a, uh, we'll just make them red for, for the sake of it and our diffuse. And then we're just gonna back the face color off quite a bit. So we only get a bit of specularity there. You can see as it starts to render up a bit higher that there um, it's not as plainly obvious until you make the diffuse color darker. I could probably increase the, spec face just a uh, the face color sorry value a little bit um, and this is also going to depend on your lighting setup as well I've got an HDRI at, in at the moment which is pretty diffused um, so there's no real direct light sources sometimes direct light sources will help you out but in general like I said having a lighter um, sorry having a darker colored diffuse is going to make that easier to stand out so it's going to be subtle but if we want to make it a little bit more obvious, what we can do is start layering in some more texture. So we'll create another Pixar texture. And we'll open up the other one, which was this one here. And what we'll do is a tab and create a PXR blend. And we'll run the um, result RGB from the large fingerprints into the top doesn't really matter which way around and the other one into the bottom and then we're going to run the result r into the specular roughness from the pixar blend node um, <clears throat> so i don't get confused we'll call this large f prints and this one small f prints okay and we'll also set our 
blend mode from normal to lighten and run the IPR and um, hopefully this is easy to see in the video um, but you can see the main larger fingerprints and then some, some of the smaller specks that came from the other map now we can control the size of these maps with the manifold so we're just going to type in PXR manifold go manifold 2D we'll run the result into the manifold of the large and I'm going to change that scale to be 0.7 which will make it larger because it's the amount of repeats so it's going to have less repeats so the scale is going to be larger and we'll do make another manifold 2D do the same thing into the small fingerprints into manifold and I'm going to make this repeat more so there's going to be more of the um, little indentations they're going to be smaller but um, they're going to be more frequent all right so for some reason my uh, manifold wasn't updating but now I've just managed to force it to do so so uh, that was the first with the just the um, smaller fingerprints at one repetition and this is at two so you're seeing see a little bit more of that uh, dirty little specks there so yeah as I was saying um, your reflections are always going to be obvious in areas where it's um, either a darker uh, underneath or it's reflecting something darker so um, if I went to my Pixar surface shader and I change that back to red and just let that render up for a minute because it's going to take a second all right so you can see the fingerprint is starting to occur in the darker area previously it was easy to see the fingerprint in this area as well uh, with the darker uh, diffuse color but because it's now reflecting something more similar to the value of the uh, of the rough reflection um, you're it's finding you're finding it harder to see that there now so yeah it's just it does depend a lot on uh, what the what is being reflected as to whether or not it's easy to see I'll try a different um, light and see if that makes it slightly easier for you yeah okay so with the um, Pixar daylight you can see that immediately it's a little bit easier this is also partly because it's not got um, light coming from all directions so it's not having the light um, fill up all the areas of the roughness from all the different angles um, and obviously on the darker side it's going to be hard to see because there's not much light uh, to be made rough in the reflections but that's a pretty good example there I'm just going to go back to our um, aluminium looking one that is with uh, our diffuse set to black and our face color set to white um, and this is just so I can show you um, a way to edit this on the fly if you're not happy with the way that the fingerprints are coming up so in the hypershade editor I'll just map that out again something you can do after your Pixar blend is type uh, is create a Pixar threshold and we'll just run the RGB into that and then run the uh, result R into the spec roughness and what this will allow us to do with that selected we'll better see it in the attribute editor here is degrade how much of the fingerprint is visible or how much of that map is visible essentially so um, in the original one you can see quite a lot of it and this as we increase or sort of decrease the threshold you're going to start to see more of it it's actually going to multiply to some extent you can soften this effect by increasing the transition width um, but obviously you can only do so much so you may want to get that you know looking a little bit more dirty like that so you can really see those fingerprints now but again you might want to you you might like the expansion of um, or the multiplication of that but you might want to sort of decrease the opacity or the amount of roughness but you can't do that normally because your specular roughness is plugged into your map as you can see so what you could then do is use another blend run the result RGB from the threshold into the into the bottom and run the result R into the specular roughness and then make this top color black and then with that selected 
decrease the alpha. So now if you look at this, very obvious, this one less obvious because we're just blending in a black um, color over the top. So we can still use what we had you, uh, created with the threshold, but sort of just back it off. Or you could even use it to back off, you know, the original one if you if you still like that, but you just wanted it to be a little bit softer, like so. Really good for highly reflective surfaces like aluminium, as you can see here. Um, so that is pretty much all the little tips and tricks I can think of off the top of my head for how to do um, roughness maps for things like smudges and fingerprints and little scratches. You go a little bit further and add some normal maps in. Um, I've already got a tutorial for scratches. You could expand up on that with a um, specific scratch map or you could use a procedural. I'll leave it up to you. That's it for this one though. Uh, if you liked the tutorial, make sure you click like so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a new tutorial every week for things like Render Man and other 3D software. Uh, if you'd like to stay up to date with my work, check out my Instagram link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.